Hi, I'm Scott Pinzon. If you purchased its optional services, your Firebox X Edge will handle many security tasks beyond basic firewall and VPN. Web Blocker stops your users from surfing to websites they shouldn't, Spam Blocker prevents your users from receiving junk email, and Gateway Antivirus Intrusion Prevention Service adds the power of antivirus and anti-spyware signatures to your defenses. But you need to turn them on first. This video shows you how. Turning on a service also turns on edge security proxies. Specifically, WebBlocker uses the HTTP proxy, SpamBlocker relies on the POP3 proxy, and GavIPS relies on three proxies. The proxies block all kinds of traffic, as they're designed to, but if you haven't configured them, they could block legitimate files and frustrate your users. So, configure the proxies before you turn on these security services. If you want help, watch the day one video turning on proxies before this one. For now, I'll assume your proxies are ready to go. Let's turn on some services. First, let's enable Web Blocker. From the Edge's web based management page, go to the left nav, expand Web Blocker, then click Settings. Check Enable Web Blocker for all HTTP proxies. That turns Web Blocker on. Next, you see an override option that allows you to temporarily access sites Web Blocker denies. When a user complains that he really, really needs access to a blocked site, you can look at the site first using this override. If you want to use it, enable it and create an override password by entering it twice. Then, if you visit a blocked site, Web Blocker's deny message displays a field in your web browser where you can enter the override password. Keep that password to yourself so that only you, the administrator, can temporarily reach blocked sites. When one of your users visits a website, Web Blocker checks a database server here at WatchGuard to see if that site falls into a category you chose to block. In the uncommon case where Web Blocker cannot reach WatchGuard's database server to categorize a website, it needs to know whether to allow or deny web traffic. You also need to tell WebBlocker what to do with web traffic if your WebBlocker license expires. Here are settings I recommend. Choose to deny web access when the WebBlocker server is unavailable. Fair warning, if the service goes down, this setting prevents your users from browsing the web. But it also alerts you to the problem so you know to fix it. Otherwise, your users could surf the web unrestricted without your knowing it. On the other hand, when your web blocker license expires, I recommend allowed web access. Otherwise, your users would be without web access for as long as it takes you to buy a renewed license. Once you've chosen web blocker settings, click Submit to save them. Web blocker is now on. However, its default profile is strict, blocking sites that match any of 40 categories. Even on day one, you probably want to tweak these global settings so they match your company's web browsing policy. Here's how. From the left nav, go to Web Blocker Profile. The profile page displays the 40 categories Web Blocker assigns to various websites. Each category is self-explanatory, but you can find an expanded description of them in the Web Blocker section of your Edge manual. If you want to block websites that match a particular category, leave that category checked. If you want to allow sites in a given category, uncheck it. When you're done fine-tuning the categories, click Submit. You've begun! Web Blocker is running and it's blocking websites and categories you disapprove of. In just a few clicks, you've minimized cyber slacking and boosted your web defense. Next, it's time to take a bite out of spam. Spam Blocker recognizes junk mail with impressive accuracy and it's pretty dang easy to set up. Simply turn it on, tell it how to tag junk mail, then set rules in your email client to handle those tags. But why just talk about it? Let me show it to you. From the left nav, expand Spam Blocker and click Settings. To turn Spam Blocker on, check Enable Spam Blocker for POP3 proxies. 
Spam Blocker groups junk mail into three categories called spam, bulk, and suspect. Spam includes email from known spam senders. Bulk includes messages that follow spam patterns but are not necessarily from known spammers. Suspect messages fall in the middle. They might be spam, they might be legitimate mail. You have two choices for handling each category. Either allow it in untouched or tag it by inserting descriptive text into the message's subject line. Under Actions, choose to either allow or add a subject tag for each junk mail category. I suggest you add a subject tag for all three categories. Spam Blocker allows you to customize these tags, but the defaults are fine for day one. Spam Blocker receives definitions of which messages are spam from a worldwide network of servers. Leave this setting to Allowed. Otherwise, you won't get email in the rare case that Spam Blocker can't reach WatchGuard servers. You probably won't need to configure exceptions on day one, but you can learn how by clicking Configuring Spam Blocker. For now, let's click Submit to save our changes. Congratulations! Spam Blocker is running and tagging the subject lines of any junk mail it detects. Now you can set rules in your email client to tell it how to handle junk mail based on these tags. For instance, you could create an inbox rule that sends email tagged as spam to the deleted items folder. Or you could create a rule that moves messages with the bulk tag to a subfolder you've called bulk. The procedure for creating these rules differs with each different email client. To learn how to make them, search your email client's help file for rules. Once you set up your inbox rules, you'll see spam decrease dramatically. Now let's turn on GAV IPS. The Gateway Antivirus Intrusion Prevention Service uses classic signature-based protection to recognize known attacks and drop them. But first you have to turn GAV IPS on. I'll show you. From the left-hand nav, expand GAV IPS and click Settings. For maximum security, most administrators want GAV IPS to scan everything. So check the three boxes enabling Gateway Antivirus for HTTP, FTP, and POP3. Then do the same for intrusion prevention. The remaining GAV IPS settings you can set according to taste. Their defaults are good for now, but you might want to change them later. To learn more about them, just click on Configuring GAV IPS. Now that you've enabled GAV IPS, click Submit to finalize your changes. And just like that, you've enabled GAV IPS. It's now protecting your network from thousands of known threats. GAV IPS stays current by automatically checking for new signatures every two hours by default. So there's really nothing else you must do on day one. With these optional security services enabled, your Edge offers the layered defense of a true unified threat management device. Plus, once configured, these services require very little attention. He might be little, but he's also tough. That's why life is better on the Edge.